Magandang umaga po. Thank you for your presence again here today, Chairman Lim. Um, today we have our hearing on the National Day of Remembrance for Road Crash Victims and Survivors. Pero kasama rin yan, <clears throat> magkakaroon din tayo ng usapin tungkol sa mga maaaring maging solusyon sa ating congestion problem sa traffic. Lahat po nang lumaki noong 80s, alam na may mga car chases at car accidents ang mga staple sa mga action movies. Alam nyo na yan, hahabulin ng mga goons ang bida sa mga kalsada ng Maynila, tapos yung bida biglang liliko sa masikip na daanan, habang yung mga kontrabida mababangga sa mga nakatambak na kariton. Di ba? Kahit sa pelikula ni FPJ, may eksenang ganyan. For example, the 1985 film Partida had a sequence of him chasing criminals through old Makati. Wala pa kasi masyadong traffic noon. In real life, however, road accidents are neither as high octane nor as glamorous. By our estimate, around 13 accidents occur every hour in Metro Manila with each costing between 420,000 pesos to 3.47 million. But even these numbers cannot tell the full cost of losing a loved one. Noong 2017, may mga estudyante na patungo sa camping trip, ngunit nawala ng freno ang bus at bumangga sa poste. Labing apat na mga bata ang namatay. One of the students who survived, Ariel Vergara, did so at the cost of a damaged spine. In the same year, a 17-year-old Kaiser Nonan was driving a motorcycle without a helmet when he hit an uneven part of the San Mateo Road. He did not survive, depriving a father his son. This committee proposes to honor these individuals by declaring the third Sunday of November as the National Day of Remembrance for Road Crash Victims and for their survivors and their families. On this day, road crash victims, survivors, and their families will be commemorated through religious mass services, designation of public spaces as memorials, blood donation campaigns, and other means. Some may say that this bill is a band-aid solution for a problem of epidemic proportions. To these comments, the committee responds that the substantive solutions to road accidents in the country are already contained in the proposed National Transport Safety Board, which this representation already sponsored a few days ago and in fact may be interpolated on this afternoon. Second, we must not forget that remembrance is a precursor of justice. Remembering road crash victims, survivors, and their families will not only prevent them from becoming just another statistic, it will also preserve the call to justice for future generations and hopefully prevent more accidents to happen. It will insulate their tragedy from political amnesia. With that said, I would like to acknowledge our resource persons. Uh, if you can please introduce yourselves, beginning with uh, you, Chairman. Uh, Chairman Dani Limpo ng MMDA. Good morning, ma'am. Uh, Jojo Garcia, po, GM of uh, Metro Manila Development Authority. Martin Del Rio III, LPFRB. Mercedita Gutierrez of LTO. Good morning, ma'am. Beverly Isabella from LTO. Good morning, ma'am. Mark Delian from Department of Transportation. Good morning, ma'am. Dr. Rosario Uy from the Department of Health. Good morning, ma'am. I'm Samuel uh, Sullivan from the Bureau of Curriculum Development of the Department of Education. Magandang umaga po, Cindy Hernandez mula sa Commission on Higher Education. Good morning, ma'am. Angela Dizon from Public Attorney's Office. Good morning, ma'am. Clay Ganier from the Public Attorney's Office. Good morning, Ma'am Karen Graneta Porfra, um, survivor of um, collision. 
Ma'am, um, Erwin Paala, uh, Families of Road Victims and Survivors, hit and run po ako sa bisikleta, sing 16 hours comatose. Good morning po, ma'am. Uh, I am the mother of uh, a cross incident 15. No, Dr. Noela Conde Manzanilla. Good morning, ma'am. Uh, victim of hit and run, uh, Louis Golia, and the uh, mother of a motorcycle victim then, yung anak ko na matay. Unang-una po, nais ko pong pasalamatan ng ating mga resource persons, mga survivors, uh, at yung mga nawala ng mahal sa buhay dahil sa trahedya. Alam ko hindi madali ang inyong pagsalaysay muli ng nangyari, pero ang inyong naging masaklap na karanasan ay maaari makatulong sa iba upang hindi mangyari muli ang ganitong sitwasyon kung hindi man isang daang persyento at least mabawasan at napakasakit. Kaya maraming salamat. Uh, Mamaya-maya uunahin ko po kayo upang magbigay ng inyong salaysay. Ito pong ginagawa natin pagdinig ay para hindi natin makalimutan ang inyong mga mahal sa buhay. Maraming salamat. Sa inyo naman, alam nyo tuwing may mga pagdinig tayo siguro nakukulitan na kayo na kailangan ninyo ipakilala yung sarili ninyo. Kaya lang uh, para lang sa ating mga suki dito <laughs> dahil nire-record ang ating hearing eh so dapat talaga marinig na kayo yon at saka para lang for the record palagi ang inyong pagkilala uh, so ngayon meron akong isang kaibigan kasi na tumawag sa akin at pinaalala kasi nung nakaraang kongreso ito po'y na-file namin kaya lang Bandang dulo na hindi na nakahabol. No? Dahil mag election pa nga noon, mas maaga ka may nag, uh, nag-break. Pero hindi ko po kinalimutan kasi, syempre, isang ama rin yun na talagang um, yung kanyang pighati dahil nga dun sa nangyari. So sabi niya, maganda naman sana na maalala yon Hindi lang para sa anak niya o para maalala lang yung o para maalala yung mga namatay. Kung hindi, para ipaalala rin sa ating mga kababayan na may peligro na meron tayong pwedeng gawin para maayos natin ang mga kalsada natin, ang sitwasyon. Wala naman atang tututol sa paano kalang ito. Gayun pa man, nais kong hilingin ang inyong oras ngayon upang magbigay ng inyong sariling karanasan, anong nangyari sa inyo o sa inyong mga mahal sa buhay, para yung ating mga ibang panauhin dito at ating resource person ay maintindihan rin ang ating panukala ngayon. Umpisan po natin kay Dr. Noela. Meron po kayong kwento tungkol sa nangyari. Uh, magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Ito po ay panawagan ng isang nanay. Madam Chairpo, Chairperson, mga ginang at ginoo ng Senador at sa mga panauhin advocates of the road safety. Buong pagpapakumbaba at aspuso puso pa akong nananawagan po sa inyo at sa lahat ng ahensya ng gobyerno na tulungan kaming mga pamilya at mga biktima na magdeklara ng isang malawakan, malalimang at agarang all-out war against humanitarian crisis and epidemic scale of fatal road accidents. Ibabahagi din po namin ang aming mga kasama na si Ginong Ewin Paala, ang bangungot ng top one cause of death ng mga kabataan sa murang edad na 15 to 24 anyos buhat sa taong 2012 hanggang 2017. Sa pamamagitan ng Senate Bill 605, Senate Bill 10018, Senate Bill 1035, Senate Bill 1036 at House Bill 4611 ay maging National Week of Remembrance, Linggo ng Pag-alala at Paghihilom at may sapat na nakalaang pondo at angkop na appropriation para makarating ang laban natin para sa kaligtasan ng kalsada hanggang sa bawat sulok ng kanayunan at sa buong Pilipinas. 35 highly urbanized cities, 145 cities and 81 provinces, 1,469 municipalities at 44,045 barangays. Bilang dating Municipal Health Officer ng San Jose Occidental Mindoro, ng 18 taon ay mulat po ako sa kapabayaan at kawala ng paggalang sa buhay ng tao, lalo na sa usaping kaligtasan sa kalsada. 
Ako po si Dr. Noela Mansanida, 66 years old, 62 years old, isang naulilang nanay nung namatay ang aking ikalawang anak na babae na si Janine. Kasama niya nasawi sa kapwa niya medical nurse at matalik na kaibigan na sina Rose Ann Aquindo at Lynn Pasqua. Ngayong darating na November 17, fifth death anniversary na po nila, nilang tatlo, nilang tatlo at ito po ay nangyari sa C5, sa Yeah, sa C5 po. Ngayon darating at matataon din ang pagdidiwang ika-14 United Nations the World Day of Remembrance for Stroke Victims. Kasama ko po ngayon ay kapananay ko na si Loey Golia na namatay ang anak niyang babae na si Snow White dahil sa aksidente sa motorsiklo sa Baras Rizal noong September 19, 2016. Hindi masukat ang hignapis niya. Kasama ko po rin ngayon si Karen Granita, she's a nurse, na matapang na survivor ng karambola ng tatlong dambuhalang truck sa Nagtahan Bridge kung saan namatay ang kanyang matalik na kaibigan na si Ivory Abaya noong September 27, 2016. Halong, halos isang oras na naipit sa tatlong truck ang Toyota Vios ni Karen at Ivory. Hindi mapinta ang hinagpis ang labis na pagsubok na halos maputol ang braso ni Karen, kaya kinakailangan siya ay maospital ng anim na buwan. Lubog na sa mga patong-patong na utang at usad pagong na ustisya sa kanilang pamilya. Trahidya sa mga munisipyo. Bilang isang nanay ay ito ang aking malalim na dahilan kung bakit nanawagan po kami sa ating gobyerno ng malawakan, malalim at agarang all-out war against humanitarian crisis at epidemic scale of fatal road accidents dahil sa pinakatahasan at pinakalantaran na kawalan respeto ng bu sa buhay ng mga mahihirap at dukhang tao na liblim sa munisipyo at barangay. Naisasabi ko po ito sa pag meron pong mga sa Department of Education, pag meron pong mga sports event, hinihiram po nila ang mga sasakyan, lalong-lalo na po. Ang ipinibigay po ng LGU is the dump trucks, which is used for garbage collection. Yes, uh, so isi-side ko po rito na meron pong nangyari. Then, uh, I would only uh, ask the people here na please uh, respetuhin din po nila at galangin ang buhay na ang tao ay hindi basura. Bilang isang nanay at lula, dito po lubos sa sumasamang loob. July 19, 2019, ito lang po, Department of Education, Region 7, Cebu, Visayas, na sadyang hiningi sa Municipal Government of Buljon, Cebu, Province, ng DepEd Teachers sa Eskulahan, isa kay gar ng garbage truck, ang di bababa sa 32 ng mga bata kasama matanda para dumalo ng DepEd event. Usually sports po ito. June 8, 2018, Municipal Government Truck Use for a Wedding na ipinagamit sa 54 katao na, si, na siksikang ipinagkasya sa garbage truck para dumalo ng pamanhikan sa kamag-anak ng opisyal ng gobyerno. August 18, 2011, Municipal Government Truck Use for Funeral na ipinagamit sa maralitang tao sa libing ng isang 70 anyos na lola. Naksidente po ito at nagkaroon po ng malaking uh, hinagpi sa pamilya. Ngunit ang ina, hinihingi po namin sa mga kinakaukulan na sana, uh, ipahina po na ang attitude natin na hindi po dapdrak ang sasakyan ng mga tao, kundi uh, I think the local government can buy a, a bus or what for, for, human, for human purposes and not, not people are not uh, garbage. Narinasan ko rin po ito dahil nag-rescue uh, po kami sa isang, sa isang uh, ma malaki po ang baha sa amin. So, binigyan po kami ng sak sasakyan at dump truck din po. At uh, dahil siksikan po, nagbigay na lang ako ng magandang ano sa mga harap na nakaupo yung mga importanteng tao doon. So, dito po kami sa loob. You know what? Napakabaho po na napakarumi. So, dapat, uh, I even uh, mentioned this to our local officials na sana sir, respetuhin nyo naman po kami. Uh, so, meron na po lately, yung ibang, yung ibang ano, nabantayan ko na, na bumili po sila ng bus for that purposes. 
nakatayo kayo? Walang yes. silya yan, eh, di ba? Wala. Nakatayo po sa truck. Oo. No, no, walang sasakyan. It's a dump truck. Sinasakyan ng basura. Kaya Because, nga, so nakatayo lang yung mga tao doon. Opo, diba? opo. Buong pagpakumbaba at sa kong nananawagan po sa inyo at sa lahat ng ancient na gobyerno na tulungan kaming mga pamilya at mga biktima na magdeklara ng isang malawakan, malaliman at agarang all-out war against humanitarian crisis and epidemic scale of fatal road accidents. Alam ko po, 103,736 na ang namatay buhat noong 2006 to 2017. Madaming nanay at tatay na naglulok sa na walang katapusan. Kailangan mamulat ang bawat munisipyo at barangay. At gusto ko rin pong i-point sa inyo sa mga TV na idinideklara po nila ang uh, leptospirosis, dengue, and other illnesses na epidemic. Pero hindi po nila tinitingnan ng vehicular accidents is much more higher. It was even considered number one cause of death. Maraming salamat po at umaasa sa inyo, families of road victims and survivors. Maraming salamat, uh, Dr. Manzanida. Siguro sa DepEd, uh, tatanungin ko kayo ngayon, ano, uh, Director, nung dating nagkaroon ng pagdinig din tungkol dito sa naging aksidente ng isang field trip, parang nagkaroon ng desisyon ng DepEd na pigilin muna itong mga field trip. Pero, I mean, kung learning experience naman talaga yon as long as the children are transported safely. So, naka, na, meron bang nakakarating na report sa inyo na gumagamit ng dump truck? Hindi ba dapat ang DepEd nagbibigay na ng memo na maayos na sasakyan ang dapat gamitin para sa estudyante? Magandang uh, umaga po uh, muli, uh, Ma'am uh, Senator. Uh, habang pinapakinggan ko po yung kwento ni uh, Nanay, uh, naalala ko na uh, noong uh, 2017, uh, naglabas din po ang uh, Department of Education ng isang policy. Uh, ito ay patungkol sa implementing guidelines on the conduct of off-campus uh, activities. At sinasabi po dito na... Uh, um, observe the safety and security protocols for all participants before, during, and after the activity. Ito po ay para sa lahat ng mga public and private uh, schools natin. At uh, ito ay paalaala na sa lahat ng ating mga school heads, mga superintendents, na i-observe po ang uh, polisiya na ito po, ito po, Senator. Siguro dapat magpadala kayo ng bagong memo sa mga paaralan na nagsasabi na pag sila ay berenta ng sasakyan sa reputable, di ba, reputable rental places na maayos yung bus na hindi naman bulok. At saka, sabi mo nga, it has come to our attention that in certain places, children are being transported using a dump truck. This is inhumane <laughs> and it's unsafe. I mean, I'm sure you can do that, right? Apo. You can send a memo. Kasi yan naman, hindi naman yung, yung basic safety premise yes. nandiyan na. Apo. Pero yung iba kasi, nagdi-discarte pa ng mali. Diba? Sabi, no, safe naman yung dump truck eh. Matibay naman yan eh, diba? Nagawin ano po mali? namin, Senator. Oh, please. Uh, and can you please furnish us a copy of that circular you will be sending? And I will also be coordinating with the chairman of um, uh, education in our in the Senate, Senator Joel and Senator Sherwin to follow up. Gagamin po. Sibigan mo kami yan. Opo, Senator. Secretary, please take note. Um, sa chat din po, pwede kaya yon mag mag-issue rin kayo ng circular. Madam Chair, uh, on the part of the Commission on Higher Education, kamukha po nung nabanggit ng DepEd Noon din pong 2017, nagkaroon po kami ng chat memorandum order number Um, 63 series of 2017 entitled Policies and Guidelines on Local Off-Campus Activity. Uh, ka, in coordination po sa paggawa po namin bago itong CMO, yung Joint Memorandum Circular, kasama po namin sa mga discussions at TWG, ang Department of Tourism, ang LTFRB, ang LTO, 
ang local uh, ang League of Municipalities, League of Cities. Uh, yung pong CMO po na ito or policies and guidelines ay nakasaad ang mga requirements uh, sa pag-conduct na bago, during at after the conduct po ng local off-campus activities. Meron po kaming kopya na uh, dala, meron din po sa aming website sa CHED. Pero meron bang nakabanggit doon tungkol sa tipo ng sasakyan, uh, yung kalagayan ng sasakyan na dapat nilang gamitin, na dapat maayos, and from legitimate operators? Meron pong nakasaad doon, Madam Chair, doon po sa requirements, pati po doon sa proof na ipipresenta nila kapag ka ikakandak na yung local off-campus activity. Thank you, Ms. Hernandez. I'd like to acknowledge uh, the Vice Chair of the Committee on Public Services, Senator Bong Revilla. Thank you, sir. <laughs> okay. Um, nice kong tanong yan dito sa pamilya ng mga nabiktima. No? Sino sa inyo yung nagkaroon ng sitwasyon na uh, sa kap dahil sa kapabayaan ng iba kaya nangyari yung aksidente na yon? Sa iyo ba? Di ba? Sa, sa inyo po? Sino, sino sa inyo? Kasi yung iba pwedeng aksidente lang talaga, no? Uh, yung sa inyo ba, Dr. Manzanida, doon sa may C5, anong naging dahilan? Ba't nagkaroon ng aksidente? Actually, naka-court ho kami. Pero sasabihin ko uh, na hindi ko po may imagine na yung sasakyan ay lumipad from 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 the north lane going to the south south lane na ang barrier is only the front box so sinasabi na in simple conclusion ko lang maybe the driver is either drink or drunk drink or drug bakit ano bang sa uh, is, ano ba to taxi ba yon hindi po uh, private car sino nagda-drive kaibigan nila hindi uh, drive Dalawang sasakyan po kasi. Itong sasakyan sa southbound, lumipad to the northbound. Ah. And ang conclusion po namin, simpleng conclusion is the driver is must possibly drink or drug. Dahil so, hindi po lilipat and on a, on a fast, oh. fast speed. So siguro kung drink ka or you are drunk, the tendency is for you to drive it fast. So nangyari, yung, mga, yung anak ninyo, Nandun sila sa tamang lane. Meron lang Opo. na cross. So talaga, Opo, lumipad po yung sasakyan so, to the other okay. lane. Okay, wala pa silang blood test dun sa... Oh, that is another to be tackled sa yung alcohol and the drug. Oh. Drug test, wala po. Kasi on the second day of the death of my, my daughter, I requested an alcohol and a drug, drug test, but the mother refused. And uh, I, I requested it sa police. Wala, hindi po nagawa. And there namatay was ba? no... Namatay, namatay. Tatlo po sila namatay na nurses. And there was no uh, alcohol... Ano nga yun? Uh, alcohol breath analyzer. I think to, up to this present, seldom ano. Hindi, tatapin. pero yung driver na lumipad yung sasakyan, namatay na ba? Hindi po, buhay na buhay. buhay. Siya. Yes. Eh, Pajero, I know, no, Montero po kasi, samantalang sa mga anak ko is only I know ba, ano ba naman I know ba? Ah, hindi yung father-in-law ko nahulog sa third level ng parking lot. Inova yung sasakyan buhay pa rin. But I'm saying, depende kasi sa tama. Di ba? So talagang... Simple ano conclusion ba? is either drunk or drug. Oh, well, Kaya hindi po siya... Pa, hindi po lili, tatakbo yun ng mabilis kung hindi po nakaganon. Kung ordinary, normal, rate only, I think hmm. the... I think yung sasakyan na yun is na hindi lilipad sa kabilang lane. Nakakalungkot. <laughs> Tatlong Nangin nurses po ang namatay. Uh -huh. Ang rider is six. Six people. Ang ang namatay is on the right side of the driver. The least injured is the driver dahil nakaano po siya sa sa, sa sa plant box. Eh. Nakatabi po siya ganun sa plant box. So ang tendency is paglipad nun, ang, ang, naka, ang anak ko is nakasakay sa right sa tabi ng driver. So, immediately she died. Pero yung dalawa, after six hours pa, gumastos pa ng todo-todo. Oh, sorry po, Dr. Okay, okay, okay Kayo po, po ano, paki... Um, 
Madam Senator, um, good morning. Uh, Senator Revilla, good morning din po. Uh, hindi lang po nakapunta ang pamilya ni Celso Taray. October 2018, last year lang po. Similar, very similar po. Nag-viral po yung kanya. Siya po yung parking attendant ng anak po, apat. Uh, sa lahat po sa uh, hirap. Parking attendant po siya, 55 years old na. Nag-viral po siya sa Tomas Marato, nabangga po ng hit and run. Uh, allegedly, laseng at drug. Um, nakipaglibing din po kami, pero what the sad part po is, hindi rin po nakuna ng alcohol breath test at drug test. In fact, ma'am, uh, dahil na-meet ko po talaga yung family at pinagkatiwala nila po sa akin kahit yung mga police report, inquest report. Ang nangyari po, ang mga kasama po natin na taga Quezon City na police, dinadala pa po pala lahat ng mga victims sa Quezon City sa Jose Reyes sa Manila. So that prompted po yung grupo ko. Nakipagkilala po ako sa sa chief ng ER ng East Avenue. Kasi sila, wala rin pala silang breath analyzer. Wala lahat. Kaya sir, for ma Madam Chair, um, we have other stories like that, but because in kanya po, 2014 pa, yung kay Celso Tare, 2018, which is last year, hanggang ngayon po, wala pa rin breath analyzer. At ang ginagamit po sa inquest proceeding sa San Jose, na Jose Reyes, is yung lumang, yung luma ma'am na ano, maglalabas ng tissue paper, hihinga, hindi po yung ABA. Kaya, we have two other stories, pati po yung nag-viral this year, yung artista po ata sa isang kilalang network, na yung, nung in-interview yung chief police mismo ng Makati, at nag-on the ground siya, hindi rin kinuha na ng alcohol breath analyzer yung bata. Wala rin. So, nung, yung, ayoko naman po mag-name ng mga kaibigan kong piskal. Ano, lahat po na dismiss because po, there is no evidence that is gathered. So, uh, kumakatok naman po kami nakikipagtulungan kami sa mga kaibigan namin sa DOTR, sa LTO on how to better revisit the IRR because this year po, five years na po yung IRR ng Republic Act 10586 and we are willing to help ma'am improve it uh, but there is no implementation Madam Chair until today. DOTR, meron ba tayong budget para sa mga breathalyzers mga ganon or MMDA? Hindi ko alam kung siguro kayo yun, no? Yeah. Uh, good morning, ma'am. Uh, supposed to be the Department of Transportation. Uh, uh, may tayo, meron tayo dapat annual budget on road safety. Unfortunately, nakaludge yan dun sa MVUC funds, which yung past uh, Congress natin, tinanggal yung road safety fund dun sa list na dapat may earmarking tayo mula dun sa nakokollect natin sa motor vehicle users charge. So now, all of the funds are now going to engineering, yung paggagawa na natin ng kalsada. So, wala po tayong uh, annual fund ni, ni piso po on road safety. So, any, ang, ang DOTR po ma'am, uh, spearheaded a uh, Philippine Road Safety Action Plan. So, a very comprehensive action plan to address all of our road safety concerns. Unfortunately, ni, ni piso, wala tayong pondo. To fund so, meron din uh, dapat yung MBIS, di ba? Uh, so, ang ginawa ng Department of Transportation, since wala nga tayong pondo dyan, uh, yung MVS, for example, to check roadworthiness of uh, public trans uh, vehicles, ginagawa natin private na lang. Kasi nga, wala tayong pondo to fund uh, government projects. So, ginagawa ang privatized yung uh, uh, inspection systems ng uh, MVS. So, ongoing po yung ginagawang uh, accreditation ng LTO for motor vehicle inspection systems. But uh, for all the rest, like uh, establishing a road safety unit na dapat uh, by uh, next year, ma-establish namin. Wala po kaming uh, uh, pondo for that. Nako, mabuti na lang pala nagkaroon tayo ng pagdinig na ganito ngayon dahil panahonan ng budget, di ba? So, baka naman pwede nating paglaanan kahit man lang yung breathalyzer kasi importante yon. Usually, pag may kikita kang sasakyan na pagyawang-gyawang, di ba? Pwede mong pababain yung nagda-drive tapos mag-breathalyzer Pero gayon pa man, pwede rin siguro pagsabihan yung ating mga traffic enforcers na habang wala pang aksidente at nakikita lang erratic yung pagmamaneho, meron namang other ways of testing kahit walang breathalyzer. Pag wala pang aksidente, ha? meaning walk in a straight line, yung mga ganun, recite certain things, pwede rin gawing indikasyon yun. Okay, so... Kung meron pa kayong idadagdag, kasi wala naman yata ang tutul dito sa paano kalang ito. So, tatapusin na natin ito pag dinig. Do you have to, you want to add anything? 
Ikaw muna, sir. Madam Irwin. Chair, ano rin, um, salamat din sa Yusek Mark at sa mga kasama natin sa transportasyon. Uh, naniniwala, full support po kami dito. Uh, maganda pong panahon, tama-tama rin po. Uh, full support po ang victims po sa pagkagawa po nito. Ang pinaka um, apila din po namin at uh, makakaasa po ang mga kasama namin sa gobyerno na sa tulong po namin. Kasi po yung hindi ko na po isi-share pero Madam Chair, yung pong full report from the Philippine Statistics Authority na tulong po ni Yusek uh, Dennis Mapa, uh, yung all-out war po na sinasabi po ni Nanay, bukod sa galing po sa puso niya yun, may, may pinanggagalingan pong report yon This is the 60-page, 12-year comprehensive report that was never asked or requested by any government agency. Bigyan so, mo naman kami niyan. Meron po. Meron, meron po. na? Nakaprepare po kay Comsec. Okay. And uh, enthusiastic po kami kay sa department na makapagtulungan, i-realign po yung Philippine Road Safety Action Plan with these new findings na number one pong pumapatay ng bata for the past seven years po. Maraming salamat na pinaglaanan ninyo ng oras to ha. Kasi ito very uh, tangible evidence that there's an epidemic and that something needs to be done. Now, alam mo, what is your name again? Karen. Good morning, ma'am. Karen Graneta po. Karen, ang dinig ko sa salaysay, anim na buwan kang na hospital. Tama ba? Anim yes. na buwan? Opo din. Uh, sa loob po ng dalawang taon, pabalik-balik po ako. Kasi yung first five months is nakaapat po akong operation. Then, sa mga susunod po na mga buwan, kailangan po ulit magsagawa ng iba pang operation para maisalba po yung ibang parte ng katawan ko na na-damage po. Ilan taon ka na? 25 po ako na. September 27, 2016. Kailan nangyari itong aksidente mo? September 27, 2016 po ma'am. 2016? Yes po. Okay. Ikwento mo nga, sino may kasalanan ba? Um, yung truck driver po, nasa nagtahan bridge po kami. So, pababang part po yon. So, according sa driver is nawalan po ng preno yung truck na may dalang buhangin. Since karambola po siya. Nawalan po siya ng preno, then sa likod po namin is truck na may laman po na pintura. Then sa harap po namin is another truck. Kaya na smash po, pin down yung sasakyan namin, PNVS. Then yun po, sobrang pin down po talaga. PNVS yung sinasakyan mo? Yes po. Um, meron ba silang tulong na naibigay sa'yo? Wala po. Wala pong any settlement even sa iba pong mga operators. Ongoing po ang case. So, ikaw Minal lahat ang nagbabayad nito? Yes po. Uh, with that millions, talaga napapakahirap po kaming maghanap. Kasi syempre, hindi naman po kami ganun kayaman para magkaroon ng ganyan kalaking amount. Magkano so, na yung ginagasta mo? Nasa more than mga around 3 points something. Okay. Yung TNVS na yon dapat yon insured, di ba? Anong, anong kumpanya? Grab po. Wala silang binigay maski na magkano? No settlement po. Kaya trial. Nasa oh. trial po kami ngayon. Attorney Del, uh, Chairman Delgra, ano, ano bang pwedeng recourse ni ano? That's the first time yeah. I've heard because uh, I know that uh, when that accident happened, uh, it was reported to us right away. And in fact, we issued a show cause order notwithstanding the fact that the initial finding was not the fault of the TNBS. But considering the fact that it was a public utility vehicle at may na disgrasya, Uh, we still issued a show cause order for the TNBS to explain. And notwithstanding whoever may be at fault, may obligasyon yung operator doon sa pasahero niya. And we were told that assistance were extended. That's precisely what I'm saying na, uh, to my surprise, I'm hearing it now differently. So I'll have to take it up with uh, Grab as to what happened to this incident. Ayan, ma Maswerte ka, nandito si Chairman Del Gramismo, hindi niya yan palalagpasin. Kasi yun din ang aking pagkakaintindi. Kahit hindi mo kasalanan, eh business yan eh. You insure your passengers in case of, di ba, uh, third party liability o ano man, mali-mali ata yung terms. Uh, yes, Ikaw na? Madam Chair, uh, question lang po. Meron po po tayong na report na nakukuha regarding dito sa mga drunk driving. May mga nauuli na ba tayo dyan? Uh, Ah, the morning, yes, sir. Meron po. Sa isang uh, buwan or ano, sa isang araw, gano'ng karami na uhuli niyo? Uh, I, can, I can submit the report, sir. Pero yung mga accidents kasi, meron kaming report ngayon kung ano mga causes. Meron tayo. I, I can't call with it. Pa, paano nyo na-implement yun? Na-implement na, na so, ako ba? Paano yung ano? Like yung uh, gumagamit ng cell phone while driving. Diba? May batas na yes, tayo dyan. Yes, so, ilan yung nahuhuli nyo na... Meron, sir. We have, we have. Yung sa cellphone po, madali lang sa ano po yan eh, no contact apprehension namin. Nung huli, 
Yung sa camera. Paano nyo nakikita yun? Sir, kita naman sa camera. Kita sa camera? Yes, sir. Eh, paano kung tinted? Sir, kita pag gabi. Kasi umiilaw rin. Pag gabi? Paano pag araw? Sir, nakikita rin. Halos. Pero hindi perfect, no? Pero madami kami hulay. May apprehension, sir. Ang yung sa drunk driving naman, sir, usually nangyayari kasi yan madaling araw. Kasi pagka, during, pagka umaga, wala naman traffic, no? Di ba? Ah... Ang problema namin dyan, wala kaming enforcers eh, paggabi. Yun. Hanggang 9 p.m. lang enforcers namin, mama. Right. Kaya we're, we're asking for additional budget para makakaya nga kami. Kasi ang enforcers namin, dalawang shift lang. 5 to 1, then 1 to 9. After 9, wala na kami. Totally, no? Magkano, magkano kailangan nyo para makadagdag ng... Siyempre, hindi naman kung oh, kunyari... Yes, 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 yes lesser yung enforcers at a certain time, right? So, yes, mga magkano yung estimate nyo? Uh, Kompleti ko lang. <laughs> Actually, Madam Chair, po, pwede nga doon natin kunin sa MBUC na yan eh. No? Ma ma we will submit. Safety. Yes, ma we will submit. Submit kayo. Kasi... Actually, ma'am, sa house ngayon, na-approve din, merong na-request si Chairman Lim, yung additional allowance sa enforcer. Kasi right now, yung, yun yung hinihingi namin two years ago na dahil nung mula na tumating si Chairman, meron kaming enforcer at sweldo, 9,000 eh. So, sa House po, na-approve ata kami. So, hopefully po, ma-pass din sa Senate. Then, pwede natin idagdag yung para sa night shift. So, magkano yung base ngayon, 9,000? Yes, ma'am. Pinadagdagan ma namin, ma'am, ng additional 5. Which na-approve naman po ni Speaker uh, ma'am, sa House. Ma actually, hindi lang kotse din eh. Pati motorsiklo. Yes. Daming namamatay, nagmumotor every day. Tama. Tama, sir. Ah, baka every hour may bumabagsak, may Tama, mga sir. nababalian, may namamatay. Sir, actually, sir, yung pangin. helmet, yes, sir. No, no, hanggang ngayon, yung helmet, hindi pa rin ganong na-implement. Uh, especially doon sa mga side streets. Sa, no? Mag, sa loob, maybe sa, sa EDSA, medyo may ikpit tayo dyan. Pero sa loob, medyo, medyo, medyo maluwag tayo. Mayroon pa yatang ibang mga syudad sa ibang bayan or ano, na hindi inaalaw mag-helmet. Yung pa yung mga ipapatao, dapat natin yung patawag, uh, Madam <laughs> Chair. Kung sino man yung mga mayors na yan o governor na nagbabawal na sino ba mas nakakataas yung national ba o local law. Yun lang yun. At ang siyempre, ang unahin natin yung safety ng ating mga kababayan na namamatay dyan. Napakarami. Every day. Yes, Chair okay. Chairman Lim. Madam Chairman, uh, Congressman Bong, uh, gusto ko lang ay say, I'm sorry, sir. Senator Bong. Inimote mo ko, ah. Okay lang po, okay lang po, okay lang. Mga akong bata kasi, okay lang, okay lang. Gusto ko lang dagdagan yung figures na nabanggit ni chairperson kanina. I believe that applies to the national, ano, yung count, ano. Dito lang sa Metro Manila, ang average sa accidents natin ay mahigit tatlong daan daily. Daily. More than 300 accidents daily. And unfortunately, kung minsan, pati yung mga traffic na enforcers namin, nagiging biktima ng, ano, ng taksidente. Last year lang, yung isang lady traffic enforcer natin, isang lady traffic enforcer natin na nagmaman sa kalye, binangga ng isang speeding na armored na carrier ng ng isang bangko, tumilapon yung enforcer natin na namatay. So, talagang yung MMDA, all out talaga kami sa support sa panukalang batas na ito. Ako personally, as chairman of the MMDA, I see to it na kung may time ako, sumasama ako sa, ano, sa mga commemoration activities. Last year, I remember, doon kami nag-assemble sa ano eh sa Katipunan, sa UP Town Center, and then nagkaroon ng, ng motorcade. So, it's about time na dapat siguro in institutionalize na natin ito. Ano ang bagay bago natin tapusin tong portion na to? Kasi may isa pa tayo sa traffic naman. Na wala pa yung NEDA dito. <clears throat> Meron isang nagsuggest na yung local government can enact an ordinance uh, to buy some gadgets coming from the Traffic Violation Fund under the local government code. Totoo ba yan? Um, tama po yun, uh, Madam Chair. Yung uh, DOTR po, the ILG, PNP, um, and the other government agencies uh, signed a uh, joint memorandum circular 
na sinasabihan yung mga local government units na mag-establish ng speed limit ordinances. So yung uh, mga uh, local government units, binigyan po namin sila ng mga template na speed limit ordinances and at the same time, inaallow din sila na mag-procure nga ng mga gadgets to enforce yung mga speed limits and other road safety uh, devices. Lahat is, naman ng local government po meron uh, ah. It's DILG po. So, kailangan lang po sigurong uh, i-remind natin yung mga uh, ating mga local government units to uh, have those uh, ordinances in place. For example, kung uh, yan ay residential area, kailangan speed limit mo uh, 20 to 30 kilometers per hour po. Depende po yan sa ano yung uh, setting do sa lugar po na yun. So, we will uh, need to remind local government units to have those uh, ordinances in place. Thank you. Uh, Chairman Delgra. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just to emphasize uh, uh, the situation that uh, Karen was at that time, uh, we actually have the LTFRB in so far as uh, public utility vehicles are concerned, have put in place uh, policies precisely to address uh, 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 road safety, no? proactive and uh, uh, post-incident uh, for that matter. One, yung, uh, gusto ko lang i-address yan, ano? kasi po yung pagpasok natin dito sa LTFRB, ang nakikita natin na <clears throat> at naririnig na kwento is pag may diskrasya, yung biktima mismo ang nagahabol sa bus operator or whoever uh, operator at sa insurance company na discretion na nga, na perwisyo na, sila pa yung maghabol. Uh, masakit pakinggan yung mga kwentong ganyan. Kaya binaliktad namin yung, ano, uh, immediately after their incidents, and the insurance consortium, if they're here, can attest to the fact na sinasabi namin sa kanila, you go to the victim and assist them immediately, regardless of who is at fault, kasi meron na pong insurance yan. So that's why I'm very much surprised about what happened to Karen. Because that's precisely what we did also with Grab and with the operator. Uh, so, yun po ang ginagawa natin dito. Yung pangalawa po, we have raised the level of the insurance coverage. No? Uh, we have imposed, uh, in so far as that benefit is concerned, uh, we have increased it twice as much, from 200,000 to 400,000. For injuries, we have raised it uh, five times as much, from 20,000 to 100,000. So, yun po ang ginawa natin, and so far as having to protect uh, uh, passengers and or third parties uh, involving uh, public utility vehicles. On a final note po, if I may say, uh, on a personal note, I can very much relate with them. I am also a road crash victim. What, what happened? Tell us about it. Uh, I was walking on my way home, and uh, I was hit by overspeeding motor vehicle. So... When uh, now that you're chairman, I, I sustained a uh, head injury and it required several stitches. Oh my gosh, when my, was this? When did this happen? In Davao, uh, when I was in grade five. So I can fully relate with you, Mama. Well, it's a good thing that you were not brain damaged by it. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm assuming, right? Um, so, <laughs> pwede, ano, puntahan mo siya, uh, Si Chairman Delgra na talaga, ha? tutulungan na na lang. At saka ako mismo, tatawagan ko yung grab. Pero, saka tayo, please follow up ha, kung ano na nangyari sa kanya later on. Okay. Um, Madam Chair. Okay. Um, para makatulong lang po as we move forward. On one note po, uh, I would, malaki po utang na love namin sa team ni Ma'am Aurora Riel Lalas. Because since January, they really helped us with a, a comprehensive report. Now, one thank you, but I would like to, with permission po, Madam Chair, to put it in perspective. Uh, the PSA data is very valuable, and we fully trust it po sa inyo kasi kayo po mas makakagawa po ng mga solusyon. Tutulong po kami. Ngayon ito lang po, uh, tulong na rin po sa mga, and to give uh, recognition din po sa efforts ni na, ng transportation, tsaka ng attached agency. Wala lang po dito ang kasama natin sa ULAP at sa DILG. There is this very good, uh, fully funded, fully functional program. It's called the Drivers Program. It was funded 2015 pa po by the World Bank. It's a very good, simply elegant program. Ma'am, real-time po, Madam Chair, siya. Once you see, let's say, EDSA, Google-based, pag nakita mo may dot sa kanto ng Quezon Boulevard, pag 
binuksan mo, nandun yung buong police report at lahat. But what is very good about it, ma'am, uh, when it was launched 2015, until today, ma'am, it's fully functional. It is even um, linked up with, uh, nung nagma-masters pa po si Yusek Mark sa UP, uh, gumawa po siya ng socio-economic, uh, the high cost of social, uh, uh, social impact of uh, road crashes. Kaya po yung 3.7 million. Now, ang maganda po doon sa driver's program, uh, it gives a national picture po of the magnitude of road crashes, especially the impact to the economy. Okay, wait a minute. You mentioned something very interesting there. Meron isang program na makikita kung may aksidente. Opo. Ano yun? San, san yun nakasetup yung sistema niyan? Sa, MM, okay. sa DOTR? Meron kayong control room? Uh, it's an online uh, app, ma'am, na pwede nating ma-access. Um, Kinocollect po natin yung mga data coming from uh, agencies such as MMDA and police. Tinatabulate po natin and minamapa natin kung saan yung location ng ah, mga Ah, okay. Crashes. But it's not real time. I it's mean... not uh, real time. But okay. uh, depending on uh, when the reports are coming. So you're still um, referencing to that? It's working? Yes, ma'am. But uh, yun nga yung sinabi ko, ma'am, uh, for uh, 2020, for next year, wala po tayong uh, budget. budget. So nag-masters ka sa UP? Yes, ma'am. Anong program mo? Um, transportation planning, yes. Ah, okay. All right. Um, Madam Chair, uh, siyempre katok sa puso na lang po sa mga kaibigan natin sa DLG. The Joint Memo Circular, uh, I would have to give credit to DOTR, DPWH, and DILG. They launched it January last year. The Drivers Program, ma'am, stands for Data for Road Incident Visualization, Evaluation, and Recording System. Ang simple lang po namin katok, sana po by January 1, eh, ma fully implement na po siya para po dun sa panukalang batas na World uh, Philippine Day of Remembrance, yung pong mismo magiging repository natin ng data will be the actual names po ng mga namatay with the driver's So, walang program. funding yan ngayon? Wala. Magkano ba yun? Uh, we are asking uh, just 27 million for uh, Alam next mo year. sa akin, Yusek, yes, kasi meron kayo hearing bukas. Yes, ma'am. Diba, sa yes, budget? So, 27 million for the driver's program. Bahala na dyan si Senator Bong. It's a charm na lang yung, yung mga accountants namin. <laughs> 27 million for the driver's Opa, program. Okay. Pasensya na, ha? meron pa akong isa pang hearing after this, but yung iba sa inyo, excuse na. Pero yung iba sa inyo, sorry, you have to stay for lunch. Meron naman kami pagkain dyan. Uh, para ma-discuss natin yung isa namang portion, yung technical working group. So with that, I don't see any objections to this. Uh, Day of Remembrance, this hearing is adjourned. Thank you. Uh, will the others uh, please stay for the technical working group? Do we have Neda present here today? Neda? Ikaw lang? Sige. Nag-iisa ha? Tapa nga? Sige. Huh? <laughs> Ito na yata yun. Parang...
Sige lang ha. Kain muna kayo dyan. Hindi naman kita tatanungin ka agad. Maraming salamat sa paghihintay ninyo. Um, this is actually a technical working group. Meron kasi ako kaninang ano, commission on appointments. Binoto lang natin yung mga military na for promotion. So, nung nakaraang linggo, ipinasilip sa atin ng Department of Transportation ang Roadmap for Transport Infrastructure for the Greater Capital Region na sinusunod na nila habang hinihintay pa ang bagong roadmap na manggagaling sa NEDA at JICA. Ibinigay nila ito sa komite kasama ang 2014 roadmap na mas kilala sa tawag na Dream Plan na siyang ginamit nila noong mga nakaraang taon. Nung unang technical working group naman, kasama ang MMDA, ibinigay rin sa atin ang kanilang A, traffic plan in the short, medium, and long terms, at ang B, specific measures na hiniling nila mula sa presidente. Kasama na dito ang inputs mula sa mga iba pang ahensya tulad ng DOTR, LTFRB, LTO, and HBG na ibinigay sa huling interagency meeting noong July 2019. We have yet to receive an official reply from NEDA on the status of the so-called 2019 roadmap. While the DOTR has decided and announced that it no longer is pushing for emergency powers, this committee has decided to push through with crafting a traffic crisis plan, which consequently the lower house also is uh, geared towards that direction. Hindi pa natin, hindi naman natin lahat sinusukuan ng traffic. The Filipino commuters deserve no less, kaya naman nagpapasalamat kami sa lahat ng mga eksperto at opisyal na may technical na kaalaman sa mga proyekto na patuloy na dumadalo sa mga TWG at umaagapay sa amin sa misyong ito. So, ganito na lang. Um, ngayong umaga, umpisaan na natin yung Neda, bago tayo, kasi ang, ang gagawin natin ganito ha, may ipapakita namin yung matrix ng iba't ibang mga plano to see saan nagkakatugma at saan hindi nagkakasalungat. So, umpisahan muna natin kasi ito yung star ng show natin ngayon, yung Neda. <laughs> Dahil matagal nang uh, walang gagalaw na mga proyekto pag walang approval ng Neda, syempre dahil sila talaga yung mag-aaral nito. So, Ano yung, nasa inyo na ba yung roadmap? Yung, ano ba ito ang tawag nito? Yung JICA roadmap. At yung sinabmit ng DOTR sa inyo. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the committee. I'm um, Criselle Santos from the Infrastaff Transport Division, representing the Office of Director Kathleen Mangone. Um, for the JICA roadmap, ma'am, it is, it is the update of the 2014 quote-unquote dream plan. So, na-approve na po siya ng NEDA Board Committee on Infrastructure. Uh, yun po yung tinatawag ngayon na updated transport roadmap. Apo. So, that's uh, with the JICA. Um, meron din po kami, ma'am, efforts to craft a Philippine Transportation System Master Plan. Yun naman po, ma'am, yung nabanggit sa National Transport Policy and its Implementing Rules and Regulations. About that, uh, Madam Chair, hindi pa po approve ng government so, naka-draft version pa lang siya, and we are constrained to to release, ma'am, the, the version. Teka muna. Apo. So, ang tawag ninyo dun sa JICA, 2014 Updated Traffic Plan? Ano, updated? Ano yung exactong pangalan? Um, officially, Madam Chair, sa Infracom, Roadmap 2. Okay. Ang full uh, title po niya is... Follow-up survey on roadmap for transport infrastructure development for Greater Capital Region. So this is the 2019 transport roadmap by Jenna. 2014 muna tinatanong ko sa iyo. 2014 ma'am uh, has the same title, survey on roadmap for transport infrastructure development for Greater Capital Region. Pero yung sinubmit sa inyo, ito pa rin yung JICA, kaya lang updated. Opo ma'am, dalawa na po si dalawa na po yung transport roadmap natin from JICA. Okay, so inapprove niyo yon. Uh, committee level Infracom, Madam Chair. Infracom. Inter uh, interagency po siya, ma'am. So, but we are the chairman of the committee. 
So yung 2014 updated roadmap or yung roadmap 2 up, inapprove niyo na. Yes ma'am. Okay. Ano is anong bago ninyo na naman na Philippine ano? Yung pong isa ma'am, ang title po niya is Philippine Transportation System Master Plan. Philippine Transportation System System Master, Master Plan. Plan. Sino gumawa nito? Ma'am, um, NEDA commissioned, uh, we bidded out the ano ma conduct of consulting services. Okay. So, meaning, in-approve nyo na yung 2014 updated roadmap 2. Pwede na ba itong magamit? Hindi pa rin. The 2014, ma'am, oh, oh. it's being used po by the government. Now. Opo. So, ano yung sinabmit sa inyo ng BOTR? For approval? Oh, wala po. So, kayo ang nagko-commission ng study, walang binigay sa inyo ang BOTR? None that I know, ma'am, under the committee. So, bakit kayo gumagawa ng bagong study, yung sa Philippine Transportation System Master Plan? Ma'am, this is, ito po talaga yung wala tayo. Ito po yung goal talaga ng National Transport Policy to have a national uh, level, master, high level master plan for the transport sector. Wala pa po tayong ganun. Puro po tayo sectoral, um, in silos, parang ganun naman. So, so yung, ito yung, yung comprehensive sana. So, yung 2014 ma updated roadmap to uh, hindi yan comprehensive? Um, it covers the Mega Manila area, ma. Metro Manila, Bulacan, Rizal, Laguna, Cavite. Um, pwede, we can say na it covers Region 3 and Region 4A. But it's the, the same, most. whatever is recommended for those regions that you mentioned is also part of the Philippine Transportation System Master Plan. It will be incorporated, Madam Chair, kasi nauna po yung roadmap. Opo. Pero, may mga dagdag rin? Opo, for the other metropolis po across the country. So, wala pa kayong uh, binibid out pa lang ninyo yung study na to? It is actually ongoing, Madam Chair, kaya lang wala pa pong government approval yung output. Sino yung mga pwedeng magbid dito? Um, awarded na po siya, ma'am. Ongoing na po yung study. Sino ang nakakuha ng award? Ang consultants po. Uh, we have... Uh, TTPI, uh, local consultants, Madam Chair, CEST, and uh, Philcoy. Philcoy. Huh? Ano deadline yan? Um, actually, Madam Chair, nasa extended deadline na po sila under our contract with them. So, December po, supposedly. We had the... Uh, we How long did it take them to do this? More than... Sorry, Madam Chair. Uh, a year and a half po, but not yet. Completed. How much are you paying them? The contract amount, Madam Chair, is 95 million, but we have not paid them um, substantial amount kasi nga po, it has yet to be approved. Kasi uh, under the procurement rules, di ba po, we have to be... Uh, we, we follow the GPRA for this po. Pag nung JAI ka ba nagsa-study, binabayaran natin sila? No, Madam Chair, grant po yan. Grant? Okay. Bakit nanalo itong kumpanya na to? Anong expertise sila? Is it because sila yung pinaka yung lowest bidder? Ano-ano nangyari? Hindi naman, Madam Chair. Ah, sila po yung, based sa qualifications po under the TOR, they have satisfied the technical qualifications and financial qualification for the contract when it was competitively bidded out under the GIPRA. Okay. So, ganito. Um, kasi, I want... Ah, para lang... Kasi nandito na tayo, papakita natin yung matrix. Ready na ba? Okay, go ahead. Maybe we can ask our expert, um, sir, if you can explain this matrix. Ano, pa, paano ba yan? Kayo, kayo pong... yeah. I think that just list down specific projects in relation to the whole plan, whether they appear 
uh, in the plan. I think substantially the major infrastructure projects that being pursued by DOTR, like the subway, Mega Manila subway, is really the so-called star or flagship project in the Dream Plan 2014. And that is being implemented now by DOTR, including the North-South Commuter Railway, all the way from Clark to Calamba. So those are all part of the plan, and this sort of check some of them. The so-called without check, these are merely operation and maintenance. These are the institutional part. And uh, so the LRT1 is there when the dream plan was made, the MRT7 was already committed, although in the 1998 plan, that was not there, no? The common station was not there in the 1998 master plan. It got included in 2014 because of the change in the implementation of the North Loop, the extension. So some of those are the implications that once you altered some of the plan, it created problem. That's why the common station up to now has not started construction. It's nine years behind schedule because that was completed in 20, 2008, the North Loop. Had that not had they followed the 1998 plan, there would have been no problem of common station. Here <laughs> mga origin, no? So, this is the problem when you alter specifically, especially a network, a railway network. It creates problems on the, where they will meet and intersect. And you can accept some amendment as you go along because that's part of the flexibility of the plan but not the substantive part like changing the whole network or a major part of the network. Then it changes the whole demand. demand. Actually, uh, Mr. Santiago, Engineer Santiago, yung Mega Manila subway project, hindi kasama yan eh. Dream plan. Kasam kasama sa dream plan nila, pero sa original. It is in the original dream plan. In fact, because it was recommended in the original dream plan, eh, JICA subsequently put it in the, uh, in the financing pipeline. So the financing, JICA financing was negotiated as early as 2015. Pero ang, I guess yung, yung nagiging tanong natin dito sa Mega Manila subway project, yung mga additional stations? There were, I know, there were changes that happened after the 2015. In fact, the major part of the alignment was altered to ship eastward instead of nearer to EDSA, it became nearer to C5. Sa DOTR, are you aware na merong one of the newly added stations is Bikutan, which will ex expropriate a huge chunk of United Hills Village? Sa, saan ba to? Bandang... Para nyake ba yan? Uh, if uh, I may, ma'am, uh, we can relate to uh, Yusek uh, TJ Batan. Uh, siya po yung Ay, in charge sa uh, railways, ma'am. Oo oh, oh, nga pala. Um, sige, kasi meron lang yung mga nakatira doon na nagtatanong di umano meron daw mga iniwasan na mas affluent subdivisions para sila yung daanan I think we can uh, remove their or uh, dampen their, uh, their fear no? because uh, this is a subway most of it are underground does not affect above ground except the station level. In the Bikutan area, if I remember it right, it will be as near as the, the new ITS, the FTI, where there will be a provincial bus and a commuter uh, and a subway station right there. Okay. Um, so, ganito na lang. Bef kasi before I endorse this uh, to to my, my group, there are just a few things, uh, and I'm just naturally curious, no? So, meron na bang kasunduan yung DOTR, yung MMDA with the local government? Di ba meron yung I-Act dati? So, did you reactivate that? Um, ongoing pa po yung uh, Interagency Council for Traffic natin, no? Uh, it's an ad hoc, pinaka, ang pwede natin sabihin, it's an ad hoc committee. Kasi uh, very informal itong uh, committee na to. We don't have an executive order. Uh, backing up uh, this committee, nagkaroon lang tayo ng memorandum of understanding between these agencies to use 
utilize each other agency's resources. For example, kailangan natin ng additional support from HPG, magbibigay sila ng additional support. So basically, ang nagbabind lang between these agencies is just a memorandum of understanding and very dependent dun sa existing resources ng bawat ahensya. Uh, it doesn't have a policy-making uh, power. Uh, so magre-reflect pa rin yan sa uh, local government units to have ordinances. So talagang enforcement lang siya, bale. Wala siyang uh, policy-making uh, authority. Pwede pang gawing batas yan? It can. Yes, diba? ma'am. Yung, yung po yung uh, gusto sana natin, mm -hmm. if we can have uh, a single uh, traffic authority. Pwede bang yusag de Leon? Kasi kayo yung nakakaalam ng pangangailangan nyo, pati si GM Garcia. Mag-draft na kayo ng pwede natin ilagay sa bill. How do you want the local government to respond? And then with your consultation with them, with your lawyers, kasi alam mo, we're also stretched, di ba? Eh, kayo rin. But you know what you need. So write it down there. Tapos, siguro we'll get a constitutionalist to see how it will affect the local government code. Kasi hindi na natin pwedeng banggain yun. Uh, um, ta tama yun, ma'am. Um, eh, pwede bang makuha yun, like, by November? Pagtulungan uh, ah. natin, ma'am. Pagtulungan natin yung uh, bill na yun. But uh, tama po kayo. May mga, sometimes there are conflicts between uh, local government uh, ordinances and uh, national government uh, laws. Sinabi po kanina ni Senator, Senator Bong, national law, kailangan naka-helmet. Sinabi ng isang local government law, uh, tanggalin yung helmet. May mga ganun pong eh, conflicts oh, minsan. Hindi, pero, kaya nga, pero siguro if we're specific about uh, certain policies, basta traffic lang. Siyempre yung safety, importante yon pero doon tayo magkakatalo siguro sa mga ibang mga local government. Pero when it comes to what you need that you think is essential that they agree. Kasi the president's very popular, ha? And naawa na nga ako sa traffic czar ng Quezon City, di ba? Nagalit na eh. Pinukpok na yung, I'm sure, frustrate, frustration, di ba? Dahil ang daming hindi nakikinig. But if the president orders it, even through an executive order first, kasi kami, nagkakaroon kami ng resolution, and then the president backs it up. Baka the Senate can have a resolution the same way we had the resolution yesterday um, for the how the rice tarification ano, will be spent. Baka pwede rin yun. But write it for us. Again, you know what you need. Eh, can you help each other? Good morning, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Actually, ma'am, sa house, no, may version si... Uh, Kong Sarmiento. Kong Sarmiento. Ganyan din. Actually, nung nag kami, I even asked them, What's the difference between IAC and yung binubuo nga niya? No? Kaya nga, yung IAC is full, ano lang yun, full enforcement talaga. Wala siyang any power, no? Ano yung IAC? Batas ba yun? In the Interagency Council for Traffic, mawa lang eh. Si, kasi mawa lang. Nung tinayo yun, ma'am, ni Secretary Art Tugade, during that time kasi wala pang chairman ng MMDA. Acting lang si USEC Team Arbos during that time. Kaya ginawa niya yung IAC para palakasin. Nung nagkaroon na ng chairman, naging enforcement na lang sila. Yung... Oo. Nabasa ba ninyo yung bill ng lower house? Ano? Gusto niya? Hindi na draft pa nila. Ma'am, hindi pa. Ano eh. Kasi nga... Ang... Ay, hindi pa ba, nas hindi pa ba nasubmit ni Kong ah, Sarmiento? Resolution pa. Nagihiring pa rin kami. Nagihiring pa rin kami. Okay. So, let's help each other. We're, we're going on break, but we have our budget hearing tomorrow. I will mention that again. Kasi if by November, meron na tayo yung... I think that's, that's key here, eh, is to get the local government together uh, towards one direction para, kunyari, no parking on the left side of the road in roads this big or this wide. I don't know, something like that. Sir? Actually, Mama, tomorrow nga meron kaming Metro Manila Council, eh, tomorrow, na schedule kami, no? Talaga ang problema lang ng, sa part, no, ng MMDA, yung sinabit namin kay, kay Senate, Uh, Senator Dillon, eh, na kinapi-furnish namin kayo. Yung palakasin lang yung mandato namin. Kasi, eh, eh, chain reaction na na. If, if Metro Manila concerned kung traffic lang, ah, yung isa lang dapat yung mga isang single ticketing system, is, ma-overpower ma namin yung kunyari, one-side parking ng LGU. Sabi namin, hindi pwede. Yung mga ganon. I, I mean, we, we already submitted. At yun din yung ata version ng house. 
okay. na ginagawa, palakasin lang, kasi wala talaga, wala kaming ano eh. Again, pag, pwedeng palakasin, pero paano kaya yung effect sa local government code? Uh, I think ma'am, kung ang pag-uusapan lang is yung traffic lang. I mean, traffic, well, hindi na, kasi yung una kasing version ni Congressman BF, nilagyan, nilagyan ng legislative uh, power ang MMDA. So, parang siyempre, mawawala ng power yung vice mayor and yung council nila. Sa kanila yan eh. Sa amin, pagdating na sa traffic, no? Like, for example, kasi, I don't know, sa news, no? Yung lumabas. May driver tayo, more than 500 ang violation. Nahuli, no? Hindi namin makuha yung lisensya niyan eh. Eh, usually yan, pag nakatatlong huli, dapat kunin mo lisensya, suspindi namin eh. Once ginawa ni Chairman BF during his time, ginawa niya yung lisensya, dinimanda kami, nanalo sila kasi nga, wala kaming police power ang MMD during that time. When, when, when I say police power, it's not yung power to arrest o meron kang barela. It's just the power to legislate eh, ng policy. Okay. We'll look into it. Um, how to harmonize the different laws. Uh, it's, I'll admit to you, uh, GM Garcia, it's a little bit controversial ah, to give the, the power nga to confiscate licenses for the, to the MMDA. Uh -oh. So, basta tignan natin kung anong magagawa natin. But definitely, we should form a body. And kung pwedeng up upuan namin ako, si Kong Sarmiento, yung sino ba yung mga mayor natin na we're talking about here? Mayor Joy? Mayor Isko? 17. Mayor... 17, ma'am. 17 mayors. Yeah. 16 cities, 1 municipality sa Metro Manila. Mm. Well, if we're talking about only, ma'am, the good thing is, pagdating sa National Road, binigay sa amin yan eh. Kami nasusunod ticket namin yan. Yung EDSA, C5, Commonwealth, Cross, Boulevard. Pero hindi kayo pwedeng mag-confiscate ng licensure? Wala. Wala kami. Wala kami. Puro enforcement lang. Yeah. Pwede but, kayo magbigay ng traffic ticket? Yes, yes. Meron kami yung sarili. O, yun naman pala. Eh, Ma'am, yeah. Yun nga yung sinasabi namin. Kung yung driver sa isang araw nakatatlong huli na, let's say, no? Nahuli na naman. Dapat na automatic kung may lisensya. Kasi once sa kinawa mo yung license yan, hindi siya pwede mag-drive. Pwede mo impound din sa sakya niya, eh. Pwede siya matanggal sa kalsada, eh. Ngayon, kung driver yan ng public utility vehicle, hanap buhay niya yan, matatakot yan, eh. Kasi pag kinawa mo lisensya, hindi siya makapaghanap buhay that time. Eh. Okay. Pero, I don't know if it will be something that, that will be granted. But if ever, what you're looking at are the national roads only. Yes. Hindi kayo pwedeng mag-confiscate. Ganun ba yun? And actually, ma'am, kahit na gusto man namin buong Metro Manila, hindi kaya ng manpower namin. Eh. Uh, just, for example, Ortigas area. Tatlong LGU yan. Pasig, Mandaluyan, Quezon City. Bawat kalsada, ibang ordinansa dyan. Kung may illegal parking, yung isa nagka-clap, yung isa nagtuto, yung isa nagtitiket. No? So, talagang mahirap magulo.